Hey friends, it's Carrie with Homestead by the Highway and we are going to start some seeds. First, I wanted to go over some things that I have purchased, things that I'm reusing, and you don't always have to go out and spend a ton of money. You still have time. I am in zone 6AB-ish. I talked a couple of weeks ago in my last video when I was planting seeds into the actual ground uh, about seeds, but I wanted to give you some examples. I bought uh, these two seeds. They were on clearance, I think on Amazon, or I don't know if it was an ad that popped up on my thing. Um, it's from the Sustainable Seed Company. Both of these bags are. It was buy one, and then that one was on sale, and then I got the other one half off for, for $5 or something like that. Um, the Sustainable Seed Company, this is an heirloom seed granny's garden collection. It's got a whole bunch of seeds inside it. It also comes with a little seed growing book. You don't have to go to this extreme. I just wanted to see what the varieties were. And it was a good price compared to what I was buying at the stores anyways. But I did want to show you one of the marketing tricks out there. Right here on the packet, you can see that it says non-GMO certified. Again, you can't buy seeds that have GMO. If you're purchasing seeds to grow as just a regular home grower, they can't sell you GMO seeds. So that is just kind of useless information. There are things on there that are useful for you. On the front of that one, it says heirloom and open pollinated. Those things are important when you're looking at uh, seeds. Uh, and this is a carrot one. It says heirloom. It just means that it hasn't been cross pollinated with other seeds and it is true to what you are going to get in this packet. Sometimes seeds will cross pollinate and you won't get exactly the original version of, say, if you have two tomatoes next to one another and they get cross-pollinated, the next year, if you save seeds from those, you might not get the same tomato. But I bought these last year, like I said, on Clarence. Uh, seeds don't have expiration dates. That's the other thing I'll show you. I'll pull one out of this one. Um... These actually say that they were packed for the 2020 season. So they're older. So the germination rate, which means if I plant 10 seeds, I may only have six come up. So the germination rate might be lower, but I'll just plant some extra seeds. The seeds are still a good quality seed. I'm not gonna throw them away. That's not an expiration date. So I did pull a couple out of each one of these because I realized that in making this video about planting seeds, I had even planned what I was gonna plant. So I talk about being in zone six. Really what's more important than being in zone six is actually what is your first frost date and your last frost date. Um, my last spring frost date, the average is May 4th. So that means I'm not gonna put anything out into my garden until that is frost tender, until after that May 4th date. And because we're in Michigan, we just had snow again yesterday probably going to go another week beyond that. Um, and then my last frost date um, runs about October 7th. So I only have 155 warm days to grow plants. So if you look on the backs of your seeds, it says 80 to 90 days to maturity. So then I've got from 90 to that 155 mark to actually grow and gather stuff from those plants. So that gives me about 60 days to actually benefit from the fruits of my labor and all the plant is giving me. So that's kind of what I have going on in my growing area. So today I have starting trays that I saved. These were actually a plant of plugs that I bought. Uh, they were filled with, it was a flower. Uh, this whole, I got the whole flat for five bucks because half the flat or a quarter of it was dead from a greenhouse locally. But I saved this. This is a sturdy tray and I'm going to go ahead and use it. Granted, I'll only be able to do one in each one, whereas my bigger ones like these 
Um, I'll probably only do one as well, maybe two in some of these. But the big square ones, I did go buy one. These ones here, I'll put two or three of these uh, seeds in each one, and then I'll just pull out the ones that uh, are the weakest, per se, ones that they've grown for a few weeks. I'll pluck one out and let one or two grow, or maybe it'll be something where I only wanted one anyways. But so getting started, you can simply go buy a single tray. I went and picked up this mix. A lot of people make their own mixes. I don't do enough seed starting in the beginning of the year because I just don't have the space to start a whole bunch of seeds. But I do like to start a couple of trays worth. That way I have access to them when I want them to put them out. And I'm not spending each one of these little six packs. Sometimes you'll pay between three and five dollars for six little plants. Uh, where I can do this whole tray for under $6. So I just went and got an organic bag of seed starting mix. I'm going to throw this into a big tub. I'm going to water it down first. You don't want to put dry dirt into your seed starting tray because when you go to water them later, the water just sits on top and like bubbles. It's like it can't even absorb it. It's almost like it's water resistant even though it's dirt. So I'm going to pre-moisten this. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll put the seeds in and we'll go through that. All right, guys. So I ran in the house and I dumped my dirt into a giant tub and I watered it down. Now, in doing that, a lot of people will dump boiling water. They say that you need to sterilize your dirt. Um, a lot of people will wash all of their trays, spray them with Lysol, bleach them, and all the things. I'm not doing any of that. It's kind of not my style. I like easy, and if I can get away with kind of just checking off the things, dirt, seed, water, sun, warmth, then I'm in. Anything that takes a lot of extra work, I kind of don't play along. I mean, I do it if, it, if it's something that I really, really want, but I know that I can grow seeds with just water, dirt, and seeds. Grow plants with water, dirt, and seeds, as well as some sunlight. So that's where I'm gonna go with this. You will see people, like I said, that will actually boil water, put boiling water over this. I watered it, and you wanna water it enough. You don't want it soaking wet, but you do want it to where if you pick it up and squeeze it, it's gonna do that. But I don't wanna be able to squeeze water out of it. Um, so I've got it just enough water in there so that the soil is moist so to help the seeds break through. When the seeds start, they don't even need fertilizer or food. They just need some moisture to help. They have enough energy in the seed itself to bust through the outer casing to start uh, germinating. Just like a little chicken has the energy to bust through the eggshell, your little seed has enough to bust through as well. So the, they don't need fertilizer until later in the process. And I think last year as seedlings, I didn't even fertilize them until I actually up potted them. So I'm gonna go ahead and just fill this tray really quick. really tight. I want to give the root uh, seed room to grow roots and for them to grow down. If you pack it really tight then it struggles to fight through the dirt and I want it to use its energy to make the plant itself and grow good roots. So one of the things I shared is you don't have to have a lot of money to get started. This is a food safe container. We got chicken salad in it, I think from Sam's Club. I just saved it. I popped holes in the bottom. I'm going to fill it with dirt and I'm going to plant my onion starts in this.
So you have free resources right around you. Use them. Don't spend a lot of money to get started as you're learning. You don't have to drop a ton of money on fancy trays and fancy lights and all the things while you get started. This one was a container that we have in this grapes came in this one. And this one already has holes in the bottom of it, probably ones that are too big. So I'm going to maybe put a um, coffee filter in the bottom of that because I didn't realize the holes on the sides. Those are pretty big. So I'm going to put a coffee filter in that so when I water it, I don't lose all my dirt. And in the meantime, we'll get that set for onions. So I had an idea of what I wanted to plant out in my, I have my horseshoe shaped fenced in garden. I have a little bit of an end space at the end of my garlic. Uh, once I pull my garlic up in June, I can amend that soil and put something in there that to go from June through the end of the year into the fall. I knew I just wanted a lot of tomatoes, but I did not plan on doing any peppers at all. I just have not had good luck with peppers. I get like one or two peppers per plant. And to me, that's a lot of valuable garden space that could be spent growing something else. But I did decide, I went ahead and pre, pre picked out my seeds. I made markers last year when I up potted into my, my potato, my tomatoes. When I up potted them, I kind of lost track of who was what, and that is my goal to do a better job this year. So in that one clear container, I am going to do Utah yellow sweet Spanish onions. That's what's going to go in there. Those are from MI Gardener. He's local here in Michigan. Go figure. Um, I am going to try to plant some celery. Not a lot, but I do like a little bit of celery uh, for random things. So we are going to try some plants of those. This is the Utah 52 to 70 tall celery it takes 120 days to germinate so this one i've got to get started or it won't have enough time by the end of my season so those won't be coming up until early fall for me uh, we're going to do lettuce paris island this is going to be like a uh, romaine lettuce uh, Rutgers tomatoes I grew these last year and I love them and I have bought them before it starts so Rutgers is a favorite tomato of mine uh, popular purses good purposes good color fine flavor large fruit they're globular slightly flattened heavy walls and small cells they're wilt resistant um, and they're a medium late medium late determinate, meaning determinate means they're only going to get so big, tall. They're not viney. They're not going to go everywhere. And that's what I want more of is a little more control. I had vines last year going through my cage garden in every direction, and I didn't know what tomatoes were coming from what. So we're going to go with this Rutgers tomato as well as this actually is going to be a vining tomato. It's a large red cherry tomato. And then I've got Romas. I'd love to grow a bunch of Romas. My goal this year is to actually be able to do my own pizza sauce and uh, tomato sauce for spaghetti. These say very little juice and mild flavor. They are determinant uh, and disease tolerant. So that's what I'm going for with that. I have decided that I'm going to do a couple of zucchini uh, plants this year. This is a zucchini black beauty. So we're gonna try a couple of those. And once they grow and I get them, I'll share with you in the kitchen why I actually want them. We don't eat zucchini, we don't eat fried zucchini. It is not our thing, but I do want them because I can add them to other things. Uh, so I do want some zucchini plants. Uh, these I'm totally stoked to be growing. Uh, cucamelons, they are mouse melons. They're little miniature they look like miniature watermelons, but they're actually cucumbers. So I bought these last year and forgot to plant them. So I'm so excited to get those in this year. 
Also from M.I. Gardner, Wisconsin, SMR cucumbers. These are popular uh, for canning and pickling. So, and these were like a smooth cucumber. Those have the spines on them. This is a Burpee's Organic Muncher. So that's another um, small one. Uh, they get six to nine inches long. They're the burpless slicing variety, it says on the back. It says 60 days to harvest. So I'll be able to get these uh, fairly soon after putting them out, um, like within 30 days or so, if I get them planted now. And the other big experiment this year is going to be sugar baby watermelons. They take 75 days. It's one of the earliest watermelons that you can uh, grow. So I'm excited to try these. I've never tried a uh, watermelon before, but it came in that sustainable seed pack. So I thought, why not give it a try? Um, there's no picture on it. This one just has the vegetables on the front. They didn't have a picture of it yet. And then all the information on the back. So we're going to give those a try. Um, and I am going to do one green pepper. Well, I'll, I'll do four plants, but um, I'm going to share them. This is a sweet California Wonder Bell uh, that I'm going to try as well because I just feel like you have to have a pepper. You, I don't know. I'm just weirded out about not planting a pepper plant, even if I'm not real happy with it. I did do a medium wax uh, Hungarian pepper last year, medium heat, and they were pretty warm for me, but they were yummy, and I still have some in the freezer that I'm going to dice and do something with in another video. So that's what we're planting today. So I will plant. I might randomly say some things. I might just... Uh, scroll you through this part because you don't need to see it all but i'm going to be marking them and then we'll talk about how deep i did bury some of them and what's going where So these are those mouse melons, cucamelons, as a lot of people call them. I just opened them up and inside, one of the things with uh, Botanical Interest, this company, the whole inside of their seed packet also has a ton of information about it and about uh, the seed itself. Um, so I opened it up and this is inside. I feel like I just got the prize out of a Cracker Jack box. Um, so we'll open that up and maybe all of their, I think I planted their stuff before and maybe they do that because you can open up the whole seed packet. So while I'm doing these, I am trying to put three in each little slot so that, um, like I said, I can hopefully get two out of three. Uh, from them uh, it is very hard it is cold outside it's mm, I think 37 degrees and my fingers are not working well
he's going to get a fourth because that's what the lot of the pack is. Some packets will have, I think I had something that had a thousand seeds out of it when I was planting it outside a few weeks ago. Um, some only tell you the weight of the seed packet itself. Um, so you don't really know how many are in there. I'll have to look inside this to see I just put 19 little seeds in here, maybe 20 um, in this seed packet. And I'm barely tapping this down. Um, I just want to know if I tap and move the dirt a little bit that the seeds did, aren't sitting still on the top. So that's all I'm doing. I'm barely touching that. Um, yeah, there's probably about eight more seeds inside that. So I'm just going to tuck them in there in case something happens and I need to try to do a last minute start of them. Those were the mouse melons. And now we're going to go to the MI Gardener Wisconsin Cucumbers. It says it does not take up much space and yields a ton and is great for growing in containers. So some people don't have a lot of space or any garden at all and they just want to see if they can grow anything and so a container is a great way to go uh, start a couple plants and just grow from those some people live in HOAs and you're not allowed to have any garden at all even if it's in a container which totally makes my heart sad and I know that's not all HOAs but there's a lot of them so these are pretty good sized seeds for growing um, these little cucumbers uh, maybe they're not going to be as little as what they look like on the photo. Those are some good sized seeds. I think I'm only going to put two of these in each one. I think that's the better plan for these. And probably one is probably even better. But we'll do two and see what happens. A lot of my plants... Uh, if I don't end up growing them, I am able to gift them. I gave my niece some last year and hopefully she'll want some again this year. I know she loves the cherry tomatoes. I have yet to find a cherry tomato that I like. I, I don't like a lot of slime when I bite into a tomato and I feel like that's just like a burst of slime uh, when biting into a cherry tomato so they're not I'm not a fan I did have some really teeny tiny ones on a salad at a restaurant the tiniest little tomato I wouldn't even know if I would call them a cherry tomato they were those I did like but it wasn't that big you didn't snap through the skin and bite into like that big burst of whatever it was. Um, so those I really, I would love to know maybe grape tomatoes or, or the little tiny grape tomatoes, something smaller uh, that don't have that big burst. So this is the last cucumber I'm doing, I think. This is the muncher cucumber. And these seeds look just like the other ones. So we'll see. Uh, these are supposed to be a little larger than the other one that I planted. These I'm only gonna do one of each. Only because I'm gonna end up with a lot of cucumbers and I don't, the ones I'll be able to put in pots around but I don't have a lot of space and a lot of pots available. So we're just gonna go with six of those and that was the munchers.
peppers, watermelon, and zucchini. Zucchini, I know. I'll do I'll do six. I'll be able to gift them to somebody. The plant to the start. Even though I know I don't want more than two. Oh. I actually am just going to plant. This is one where it says one gram, two, four, six, eight, ten. Two. There's ten seeds for one gram of the zucchini squash. So that's all I'm going to get. So I'm just going to go ahead and plant all ten. So there's 250 milligrams in weight on them. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Eight. There's probably about 40 seeds in there. So, like I said, these these seeds, I'm gonna I'll try to grow them again next year. Next year, I'll just have more heavily plant them. Um, I'll put two per pot. I really don't want or need a bunch of peppers. Oh, that one's getting three. And sugar baby watermelons. We're going to do six of those and then we're going to do six cells, but we'll do six watermelon actually seeds. And these look just like the ones that you spit out when you're eating watermelons. I'm just going to do one of those. We bet there's probably 40 uh, watermelon plants in just that one seed packet. So you've got somebody that you know that wants to do it and you don't want a whole bunch of seeds, but you want to give it a try and not spend a lot of money. Each of you buy some packets and then split the seeds between the two of you or one of you grow a whole bunch and then just trade seed starts. That works too. And then lastly, we're going to, in this tray anyways, do celery. I wasn't going to do celery, and then I just watched a video and somebody else's celery has already sprouted. And then I had FOMO and I got all jelly. And so going to do some celery. Holy Hannah, you guys. So I, I don't know if you can see how tiny, like literally tiny, these are gonna like blow in the wind. Um, you can see down in there, these smell amazing. Um, so I don't even know if I'm going to only do like three in each one. So we're just going to I probably just put 50 in each cell and there's probably still a thousand in there. Um, just trying to see, does it say? It says there's one gram of those teeny, teeny, tiny seeds. So yeah, I might have a whole bunch of celery, which is okay. Cause I love to dehydrate it. Uh, I like to put it in the freezer. I like to, um, I love celery salts. So there is that tray, but I want to grab this guy here. 
and these onions. This is MI Gardener. This is uh, Luke. He's here in Michigan, just I think just north of Ann Arbor. I might be geographically incorrect, uh, Bay City area or something like that. They actually have a storefront over there. Uh, they just hit a million followers on YouTube. He has tons of videos that I even want, go back and watch some of his older ones because the knowledge and he's so close to me, I think is just invaluable. But these are the onion seeds that I'm about to plant. But I am going to plant these heavily. throughout this container. Once they sprout, I'm going to just gently pull them apart and then move them into, I'm going to actually put these in like one of those, I've got a half barrel wine container planter thing that I'm going to put these into out there um, as well as the end of my garlic. I'm just barely pushing these down. I'm not gonna cover them in dirt just going to push them into the moist soil and I'm actually going to go watch one of Luke's videos and make sure that is correct but I believe that's all he did was put them on there and and push them into the soil um but I will put them at the end of my garlic bed that I didn't fill it only went like almost three quarters of the way full so I will fill the end uh with these onions as soon as they can be planted outside but they'll be good in here i hope until that happens all right so All right, friends, I'm going to kind of just, I finished up today. I'm going to do that tray and this, and that's what I'm doing for seed starting this year. I did miss a few things that I won't have for seeds that I will have to buy a start because I didn't even have the seeds. Uh, rosemary and thyme, I'm not even sure how I missed that, but I don't have any, which is fine. I'll go get seed starts from our farmer's market. Uh, there's a uh, Booth there that I love to buy uh, herbs and stuff from. It's an organic farm and I love to buy their microgreens and stuff like that. So I will get those there. But and if you want to start seeds, like I said, if you're in my area, it's not too late to do just a small batch of seeds and we'll talk about what to do with them as you go. This is going to set on a folding table in our uh, other bedroom up by the window. It's just going to sit there and I'm going to water it. I bottom water. I'll show you that in a video. And they're just gonna grow for the next probably 40 some days. Uh, at some point I will up pot them. And that's also what I just wanted to mention. I save my containers when I buy stuff, my seed starts from other farmers, as well as save the things around you. These are those grab and go cups. I punched holes in the bottom and that's what I use to up pot my stuff. Solo cups, uh, these were my Valley Green, green peppers last year. I'll clean these up a little bit, but I save all this stuff because I just have a little bucket because I can't start a lot of seeds, but I don't want to respend money every single year when I can use the things that I we have sitting right here in our house. So uh, you don't have to, like I said, spend a lot of money 
to get started with seeds. If you have questions, uh, put them down below. If you have suggestions, this is only my second year starting seeds and I did really well last year other than losing track of what tomatoes were what tomatoes. Once I started up potting, it was just, I got a little overwhelmed and I just started putting stuff in red solo cups and then I had 70 red solo cups and I didn't know what was in what, but it was a fun game I played. And I hope to not do this year. I hope to learn from that. As well as uh, don't forget to hit the like button down below. Give me a thumbs up. It is appreciated. Hit subscribe if you wanna see the other videos coming out. We're gonna be doing more gardening videos, but I'd love to share my kitchen stuff too as we wait for the weather to warm up. As you can see, I have no makeup on. My nose is bright red. I need to go inside and take care of it. Uh, but thank you so much for your time. It is so appreciated. And for those of you who are on my Facebook as well, I always do shout outs. I can't believe this happened. I just hit a thousand views. I really, really do appreciate your time and watching the videos. And I hope you learned something and I hope to learn from you too. So please don't hesitate to share thoughts and comments down below. Uh, we can learn together as we like try to grow some of our own food. Thanks so much friends. Have a great day.